Hello everybody, it's me, Mr. Wolfie. We haven't had a talk in a while, but I felt like making a video that was not a montage or a uh, just a funny video, but more of a serious video talking about how the melee system in Halo 3 works. Because I think there's a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings about how certain weapons work and what are better than others in some sequences, but you'll understand more in a few minutes here because we're going to go through a series of testing to show every single weapon in the game and how they actually work with the melee system in this game. Now we touched on this before in a video about the brute shot I made uh, over a year ago where some weapons do extra damage when you melee with them and that affects how much damage it requires to break the shields to the point where you can melee and kill people. But in some cases it doesn't really work that cut and dried and you know this video actually showed me a lot of things that I didn't fully understand myself so I learned a good bit while making it and I hope you'll learn a good bit while watching this and you don't really have to uh, even pay much attention to what's going on here because most of this isn't even going to apply to gameplay I'll just spoiler alert you there it's just I don't even know why some of these weapons do more damage when they don't actually impact anything in the game but it is what it is and it's not just damage either you're gonna find through our testing that some weapons actually have different rates of melee speed. It's crazy. Some weapons have this weird priority they take while getting a simultaneous melee. It doesn't even make sense because it has nothing to do with the actual damage they do. So I don't know what they were thinking with some of this stuff, but we're going to uh, just get in depth on all of it. And well, actually there's a lot to cover. So why don't we just uh, go ahead and get right to it. So we started by laying out every single possible weapon in the game, including the new ones, the uh, ODST weapons that were recently added, and the golf club, just to check and see if there's anything uh, off about it. And the goal was to melee and use the plasma pistol to count how many shots uh, it took to actually finish someone off. And this sort of was a rough representation of how much health you have in the game. Now the way the health system works in Halo 3 is you have 115 total hit points. 70 are shield points, which you can see on the little bar above you. And 45 are invisible health points that are represented after your shields are depleted. All standard melees do 70 points worth of damage, whether it's to your shields, your health, whatever. There is no resistances involved in this game. So, with that in mind, we can calculate roughly how much damage the plasma pistol does to health. And this number is a little weird, 2.368421, and that's just a rough estimate because it takes 19 plasma pistol shots after a successful melee to kill somebody that is at full health. With this information now at our fingertips, we are able to calculate exactly how much damage other weapons are doing by meleeing with them and then using the plasma pistol to finish them off. If they have less shots than 19, that means the melee does extra damage. And this is just test one, there's actually more that we're going to show. The vast majority of weapons fall into the 70 damage melee category, uh, an image of which I'm going to show you in just a moment. The standard stuff like the AR, the BR, even the shotgun. You would think the shotgun would do more melee damage. A lot of people do, but it doesn't. It's just the damage uh, that the shotgun actually does usually leads to an easy melee. But all of them are 19 plasma shots. So every single weapon shown here does 70 melee damage. Now this is whether they have full shields, whether they have no shields, whether they have over shields. It's 70 damage flat rate. Now each one is a little bit unique in the melee animation, recovery time, and the melee speed itself. There's a, most of them actually are about the same, but there's a few that fall into a strange category where they're really fast and a few that are very slow. And it's going to be kind of interesting to show you which ones are which uh, in a future test. Uh, there are two brute weapons that actually do two more damage, so 72, uh, which is the Mauler and the Spiker. And this doesn't really affect gameplay, so I don't know why exactly they did it, but, uh, you know, I've tested it in several ways, and I can't find any way that this number would actually be useful in a uh, competitive setting or even a, just a mess-around setting. I, 
you'd have to really tweak the damage profiles of everything to uh, have them actually do any more damage to the point where it was a significant change in the way you play the game. So the next tier up is the uh, heavy weapons, such as the rocket launcher and the laser. And actually the hammer and the golf club, if you just do the melee and not the RT power attack, they all do about 80 damage. And that um, can be demonstrated by showing that the plasma pistol only takes 15 shots to kill. So it's a significant difference in that regards because they do do a little bit of bleed through uh, health damage. But it doesn't really impact gameplay usually too much. For the rocket and the laser and the fuel rod gun, there's actually a slightly slower melee in the first place. So it's debatable whether or not it would help too much. Out of curiosity, I tested it off camera and it, with MLG settings at 110% damage, it doesn't really make a huge difference there either. The tier that actually does seem to make a difference in gameplay is the next one up, which includes the Brute Shot. And one other weapon that's a surprise to me. Uh, the Brute Shot does about 85 damage with its melee, which means the Plasma Pistol takes 11 shots to kill. So, it actually has a noticeable bleed through effect. And the Sentinel Beam, of all weapons, has the same amount of damage. It's actually, I figure it's just a reskin, in fact, because it does the exact same damage and has the exact same, same animation. So, I mean, there's no real difference there. But uh, these have a lot of applications in the melee scene, and you'll see in the further testing that uh, you can actually do some important things with them that you can't do with other weapons. And finally, we have the sword, which just straight up kills you with a basic melee without even having to lunge. Uh, it does have a set amount of damage that it actually does, and we'll show that in the next test, but the sword remains the undisputed king of melees in this game. Under normal circumstances with uh, default settings, or MLG settings for that matter, it's a one-hit kill. I don't understand why sometimes it whiffs the damage and just doesn't kill people. That seems to be more of a glitch because there's no particular reason it should do that, but here we are. Just to show that this could impact gameplay in some way, I am meleeing a, a dummy character with the sentinel beam and letting its shields come back up and then meleeing it again. And this kind of shows how the bleed through works, so I don't know, maybe one application is you, if somebody has taken some health damage and you melee them just as their shields come back, you could use the bleed through to get a one hit melee kill, but it's, it's very... I mean, it's not something you can plan out, it's just something that happens sometimes. To show another way that this can be practically applied to actual matchmaking, uh, it takes three BR bursts and a melee from the BR to kill someone, and also in reverse. Uh, but say you had the rocket launcher, or anything of that category or higher, it only takes two BR bursts, and that could go in any order. You could melee and then two shot, uh, two shot then melee. Does this really help that much that often? Probably not. Is it actually a strategy that you could employ? I don't really think so, but I mean, it's going to be something that you might notice and it's something that might frustrate you if you run into it in matchmaking and wonder, how the heck did I die? He only shot me twice, something like that. It's worth noting because if you have taken a melee from the rocket launcher, then it makes you easier to kill and vice versa. You guys want to see something cool? We are going to do another test now, and it's going to be a very interesting test because it actually shows visually how the damage works. So for this test to work, you need to understand how Halo 3's overshields work. Now, basically, it just gives you 70 more shield points on top of the shields that you already have. Uh, in addition to that, you have a three second invincibility. So for this test to work, I had a dummy character pick up the overshields, wait three seconds, and then I would melee them with a particular weapon, and you can physically see the bleed through damage uh, on the layer of shields below. And I did this for one weapon in every tier, including the sword, and uh, showcased the actual damage the sword does, because it doesn't actually kill you in one hit if you have a full over shields. Now the thing about the sword is it does two full layers of shields worth of damage plus a little extra. As far as I can determine it's about 150 damage. Also it does the same amount of damage whether you press the melee button or the RT button. Out of curiosity I tested the hammer's right trigger attack and it does a lot of damage. It does actually three overshield layers plus about 15 more damage so it's 
pretty significant. That comes out to about 225 damage. And as you would expect, the golf club is just a reskin. It has no differences in damage values. This next test is a little tricky. We were trying to test the melee speeds of each weapon, and the best way we figured to do that was to throw down a regen, have two people have a melee fight between two different weapons, and just see what happened. Well, it, it, it kind of took a strange turn. Some weapons have really interesting melee speeds. I don't know how to explain it other than that. So I got my buddy, no one special, and my buddy Ligrigus. And we went into Forge and we just tried out every weapon in different categories. Now, to make it fair, it was my host. The two of them had a connection that was hopefully as close as possible to me as the host. Because uh, we all live in the same area. And we were all playing on Xboxes on vanilla settings. I also tried this with the dummy account, but it's very difficult to pull off, and there's a lot of human error that could be involved in that case. So really the only way to do it is to do it like 50 times, and then take the best of the case scenarios, where everybody meleeed at the exact same pixel, frame by frame, and see how close you can possibly get it, and then see if there's a difference. And I don't really think it would matter that much in matchmaking, and in fact I don't think it would matter at all in matchmaking. On LAN it barely matters, so, you know, it is what it is. But I just thought it was something that was worth testing. What we found that was most interesting was that the Magnum seems to be the fastest meleeing weapon in the game. And surprisingly, the sniper rifle actually has a slower melee, but the beam rifle has a very fast melee, so I don't know what on earth is going on with the melees in this game. They just, the animation seems to be what matters the most, not necessarily what the weapon's size is or anything else. Some weapons just have a large reset time between melees. The initial melee that each weapon does is roughly the same. It doesn't seem to be other than maybe a few pixels that I can't even detect in uh, editing difference. It's the reset time between melees that matters. One of the more interesting weapons was the Spiker, which is just extremely slow, which is very unusual because you would expect the weapon to be an excellent melee weapon, but all my testing proves that once again, the spiker just sucks. The rockets have a very interesting thing about them. It seems like, no matter what, they have melee priority in these situations. The brute shot does too, but the brute shot actually does enough damage that it can two-shot you in a regen fight. The rockets, however, seem to actually plow through, getting hit three times, which should have killed the individual and just kill you anyway. I can't figure it out. It even works for weapons that are in the same tier. So I don't know what it is about the rocket launcher, but it's a fantastic melee weapon apparently. I take back everything negative I said earlier in the video. The brute shot of course just absolutely destroys in these situations because it does so much damage bleed through with the melee. Now how this applies in matchmaking is anybody's guess. Most of the weapons aren't gonna do anything different or change the way you're going to want to play or influence the way you make decisions. It's not enough of a difference to actually play out the way that uh, these melee fights in this scenario seem to go. For whatever reason, the Magnum is the fastest melee weapon in the game. I don't really see a reason to use that as a viable strategy. Uh, but, I mean, I guess you could if you wanted to. It wouldn't get you anywhere. It's not going to change the way you need to play the game. Um, but it's just it's something that the game developers put in there for some reason. So, there's that. Uh, rockets are slow, but seem to take melee priority and do extra damage, so that's nice. The brute shot pretty much destroys everything short of the sword in a melee fight in the region, so that's a good thing. I don't know, it's just some stuff worth uh, taking note of. Now I think I'll take the time to uh, dispel a few myths and answer a few tertiary questions about melees. In Halo CE and Halo 2, the melee system was a little different. Uh, every weapon did basically the same damage, as far as I could tell, but there was a momentum 
increase in the amount of damage certain weapons did. So if you did an overhead jump attack with weapons, they did extra damage and did a lot of bleed through through shields. You could actually one hit melee kill people with certain weapons. Like I said, this is true in Halo 1 and 2, but it is not true in Halo 3. There is no extra uh, momentum melee damage. Also, side note, in Halo 3, the elites actually have a different melee hitbox. It kind of is weird. It's like one pixel different. You can inch forward in the test I did, and the elite won't lunge forward, but the Spartan will because the uh, red reticle range is just slightly different. And it's really centrally located on the head, but, I mean, it could influence some melee fights here and there in, in small amounts. It's just another weird thing that separates the Spartans from the elite player model. Additionally, as most people know, there's a weird assassination hitbox on one shoulder and not the other. Uh, it's just the way the player model holds their gun, basically, and they sort of lean into it. Uh, and it really reflects into the legs as well, so it's almost like it's just the way the, the stance is. It's, it's a visual thing. It's, it's, you gotta kinda assume you're gonna hit the right spot. And it's true for both the Spartans and the Elites. But on the Elites, it's even more pronounced and it's kinda weird. One side, one side is even more protected looking and the other side is even weaker. So I, you know, whatever. Uh, it's, once again, just the uh, way the hitboxes work. Just one more strange kill. thing about the game, I guess. So, what's the takeaway here? Basically, most of the weapons don't do any significant amount of damage difference to warrant using them as a different strategy in a melee fight. The brute shot definitely does. The sword, of course, does. And to a lesser extent, something like the rocket launcher does. But most everything else, it's just going to be the same thing. You're not going to change the way you use the weapon. Uh, you may use some weapons less because they actually suck more, like the spikers. Some people thought the spiker was a good melee weapon, and it's not. Um... And several other weapons kind of fall into that same category. Now, none of this takes into account the amount of shots it takes to melee, the speed at which they drop shields to get to the point of the melee, any of that. We're just looking at purely smashing the B button over and over, or right bump, or whatever you use to melee, and just seeing how that affects gameplay. And in this case, we have determined that it doesn't affect gameplay too much at all. So, I don't know. Hopefully you learned something here. Uh, I learned a lot. I feel like this was informative and useful in my case. In the comments section, maybe say what you liked and didn't like about this, whether you have some questions for a future video or other topics you want me to follow through with, just because, I don't know, maybe I'll make some more of these. Anyway, this has been Mr. Wolfie. Peace out. Love you guys. Hold on, are you still here?